Okay, it's Sunday night, the uh, 21st. We have one, two, three, four days left. Um, and actually, we're considering leaving on Thursday, so that would give us three days left, but we'll see about that. No, four full <sighs> days. Okay, so four full days. <clears throat> um, today was one of those great weekend days again where the crew was here all day um, from, I think, about 7, maybe 8 o'clock this morning. And uh, we're getting close to midnight now. So a lot got done. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Sheesh. The, um, the door handles both work now. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. What was this fix on that? Um, apparently the door handles um, have a bend that pushes against the paddle on the inside on the latch. And on the passenger side, the, the bend in the button was just kind of sliding. So they just adjusted the bend a little bit. And it and, and oiled, greased everything. Um, that was a big thing because everything was media blasted or some type of parts cleaning used on everything. Everything was dried out. So we greased and oiled all the locks and mechanisms today. So everything... Um, unstuck it. Unstuck, right. And then um, <clears throat> Fritz and John... <clears throat> Are you all right? <clears throat> Everything's fine. I've been upside down <laughs> most of the day. So I don't know, maybe because I'm standing up now, it's coming back up. I've been upside down on this thing <clears throat> since we started. Um, Fritz and John put on a trim tonight, uh, which is... Uh, between the lower white and the butternut yellow, there's these trim pieces. And we had to put the wheel well moldings on first because um, that determined the gap spacing of the trim. So the trim now is all on <clears throat> on the bottom, on the, gap, on the white and yellow line. The locks are in the doors and the door handles work. And we put on our pinch well molding today, which was it was fun. It was a it was a three or four person job at some point <clears throat> because we just had to you know not scratch the paint and get it to line up and and it's silly you know it's a two piece thing and it I think it has four four or six bolts or little bitty like littlest screws you can find um, held it on but <clears throat> it was a um, threatening process for us for a little while because we just did not want to chip any paint. It looks, is it just dirty? <clears throat> it has all of our fingerprints on it. Uh oh. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to polish all that up. Don't you worry. And uh, on the inside, <clears throat> we have the carpet in, which means that all the wiring is finished on the inside. Everything from the tail lights up to the dash is finished. Um, <clears throat> it's in. I still don't have a battery, so I can't test it. But the carpeting is in, and the console and the shifter are being put in now. Um, we just have to put these couple top pieces on uh, tomorrow. The console kind of tapers, you know, so on one side, the console from the floor is two or three inches. On the other side, it's only like less than a half an inch. So you have to do some spacing and some figuring out and consider the thickness of your carpeting and your dynamat because if you do it on your bare floor and then you go and you make all your shims and everything, it's going to be dead wrong when you go to put the dynamat <laughs> and the carpeting and then the console back on because dead wrong. Major thickness changes. Um, and the dash <clears throat> is completely in and the wiring is almost all tucked up. There's just a couple little tails hanging down that I'm waiting for somebody to tell me what they go to. I think I've got everything connected. So maybe they're just extras or, or as John says, it was optional in 69. Yeah. So is a fire. Right. <laughs> so we'll get those taken care of. I have to look up in the book what those three little tallies are and, and then, then we're done. And the blue uh, around the steering column was just to prevent me from scratching the heck out of everything. Those are actually uh, absorbers from um from sellers wipers. Sellers wipers that are used to pick up like transmission spills. Transmission, any kind of oil. Um, Here's more. Yeah, there, hundreds of uses. We yeah, we use them to not only protect our carts and the paint on our carts. Here's some clean ones. And prevent us from scratching things, but also to absorb all kinds of fluids around the shop. Sellers are our friend. Sellers is a fantastic company. They um, all the paper towels we use, Look, all those blue ones over there. There's a have, blatant plug for <laughs> Sellers wipers. <laughs> they have red ones that are very much like a shop towel. You can use them over and over again if you get them wet or whatever. Oh yes, um, those are up there. More of them. Right. Yeah. Well, they helped us out. And they, they did. Uh, they helped us out, and um, it's the only paper towel we use around here. And, you know, we have the red ones and the blue ones and the absorbers. It's the official towel of VATV, just declared right now, right. live. You witnessed it. <laughs> They're a great towel. <laughs> so if you can find them at your retailer, I'd say get them because 
they don't tear up and they're really very good. Well, there's a little something on that too, right? Because the red ones, the blue ones are more for like wiping hands and stuff. Because right. they... the red ones are like shop towels. You can get them wet and they don't tear and you can keep using them. I mean, they're, they're really good. And the blue ones might leave some fuzzies. So you can use those on your hands, right? If you're going to use them on polish don't, and paint or something. Yes, don't use the red ones, I believe, when you've mixed with lacquer thinner. They, they do leave a little hairies. But the blue, I didn't think we had that problem. Right on. Okay. okay. Now, look, let's look at the front of the car before everybody falls asleep. Okay, sorry, guys. Or, oh, uh, on the front of the car, we have all the trim around the windshield. Ooh. That turned out very beautifully. We had it polished. That's stainless. And let me just say... If you've got stainless trim, oh boy, are you fortunate because it goes on a lot better than the uh, chrome and aluminum stuff that dents very easily. While stainless can dent, this went on a whole lot smoother. So, um, yeah, you can wipe this stuff out too if you're not careful. You can, but this uh, snapped into place and screwed into place very well and was put on by John and Mark today and they did a great job and I didn't hear any fussing about it not fitting or being difficult. So that was good. That's a first. Yeah. And then uh, up here we've got, Kevin's been doing some more bracketry and I see some hoses have been ran and all this wiring now is under the hood. And I have to admit, I haven't taken any part in this part. So um, tomorrow I guess I'm gonna be doing some wire looming and with the tech, tech flex, is that what it's called? Yes. So um, when we were doing the windshield trim, we got a new member of the shop, and his name is Gene Kranz. Yes. Gene Kranz is a guy who was on the movie Apollo 13. No, which... slow down. What? Gene Kranz was mission control right. at NASA for all of the space uh, missions to the moon and everywhere else up until, well, he died a few years ago. but. Gene Kranz is an inspiration to us all. Gene Kranz is an inspiration especially to Kevin because Gene Kranz says failure is not an option. That's right. And in that quote, we all march around here telling ourselves we have to get this done. There is no I can't, we won't, we are not gonna, we just don't even say it. All we say is failure is not an option and we can do anything. Right, maybe I'll have a special vest made <laughs> voyage like Mr. Kranz. Yeah, maybe. That, I don't... But his wife made it for him. Um, I'm not a good sewer <laughs> at all. Okay, so guys, look at Gene Kranz and think to yourself at all the times when the car is just kicking you back and saying, I don't want all these new parts. Just remember that sometimes you got to walk away from it. Try not to make it five years between walking away and coming back. <laughs> But um, keep the positive attitude. And if you can have a bunch of buddies around who keep that positive attitude going with you and help you, then you're a mile ahead of the guy down the street who has his car parked for five years and hasn't touched it. So keep the positive attitude like Gene and keep good buddies around you like we got. That's right.